Good morning to you, our audience. Ted and Ed TV channel welcome each of you to our weekly Saturday broadcast where we give insightful views on economic, political, world, and environmental issues concerning how money connects those matters. Our hosts, Mr. Ted Harvey Sr. and Mr. Edward Bishop III, are now taking each of you into our world of money and its value, along with the evils that come from the greed of hoarding financial power. He that controls the gold controls the important decisions in this world. All right. Good evening, everyone out there in our podcast land. Uh, we are you know, with the uh, Ted Ned TV channel on YouTube. Uh, this is a Wednesday evening and we're a little bit early here. It's not quite seven o'clock yet, but we're going to get started because uh, we got a lot to go over here. And uh, I'm looking forward here because my uh, I have a pad here and this baby is two sided and it's four sheets. So <laughs> how you doing, Ted? I'm doing wonderful, man. Wonderful, wonderful. You got four sheets of stuff that you want to talk about. Well, <laughs> we probably will never get to it, but <laughs> hey, we got it's so you much know. stuff going on here. We know that, you know, yeah. and a lot of things that's going on that is really out of our control, seem like it is. Know? And, it is and <laughs> we, it's like we just like I don't know what you, what you would call us, you know, we're American citizens, I understand that, but we're sort of like um, robots, you know, everybody just go to work come home, watch TV, get up in the morning, go to work, come home, watch TV. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, um, you have no power, you know? And, and, and when you think about it, think about this, there are so many protests that's going around the country. You know, people are voting, people are protesting this and protesting that. Um, I understand in DC, I don't know if it's next week or a couple of weeks from now, uh, this um, this this white supremacy group is going to be up there, and it's going to be a big big whoop to do about that. And you got people protesting uh, the um, murder of uh, of the young man in Clearwater. So it's a lot of things. And then in Chicago, Chicago, over the weekend. You know, a, few, a few days, 60, over 60 people got shot and 11 people got killed. Mm -hmm. What is going on in Chicago? You know, we're from the Chicago area, man, and lived in Chicago. And it was it was bad back then in the 60s, but it is like, it is crazy. I mean, in certain neighborhoods. Now, you can go to other neighborhoods and certain neighborhoods and you can just walk around and enjoy your life just like nothing is going on you're going to north side of chicago and certain neighborhoods and it's like you know hey nice but then certain neighborhoods for whatever reason i have no idea they keep saying gangs 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 but what is that all about is it about drugs i don't know so i'm i'm complex on that you know i mean turf war turf war okay and they, they don't own nothing Turf war and, and and the fact that uh, uh, nobody cares, law enforcement doesn't care. They've given up the ghost on them. You know, let them kill each other. Yeah, that's about the size of it because ain't nobody mm -hmm. getting caught for it. Mm -mm, they're not, and they know it. And so the more they're being allowed to kill themselves, uh, as long as they don't go on the north side or go on the on the near west on the northwest side and everything and mess around with them. Them rich white folks, they they can kill everybody they want to kill. <laughs> South and the west side of Chicago, you know, it's mm -hmm. always those areas and stuff have always been bad, Ted, even when we were growing up and stuff there. But it has just it, it has at least they had some law and order and stuff. Now there is no law and order. Uh the mayor doesn't care, the city council doesn't care as long as they're not being killed. And they just giving up the ghost there. They don't even worry about it. They're not arresting anyone. Uh, and the gangs know it. So it's, you know, whoever can kill the other one first, uh, only the strong is going to survive. You know, it's and just the like, sad you know, part about it. Innocent people are getting killed. Absolutely. And innocent yeah. people are being killed. And innocent children, women, men, or whatever. They're scared to come out of their home, they're scared to walk around. 
but they lived there. And I believed here that the only way that this stuff is going to stop, whether it's in Chicago and New York, uh, down in uh, Florida, Tampa, Clearwater, all those places, the only time this stuff is going to stop is that if the people in those neighborhoods are going to have to rise up and say enough's enough. They, a lot of them have done that, Ed. They didn't walk the streets and churches and everything. They, they have to keep on doing it. You can't just walk to it a, a week or two and everything and then stop. You got to be serious. You got to continue to be out there and say, hey, enough's enough. We're taking my neighborhood back. And until they do that and, and be consistent about it, it's not going to happen. When people know that you're going to rise up because a little child got killed and a week later and nobody even talks about this child, they going back to business as usual, then you can't affect change. You have to affect change and stuff by going out there and consistently and stuff doing positive things and stuff in the community. I mean, consistently doing stuff there. You can't just stop and say, okay, well, uh, that child's dead and we didn't forget about them. You got to keep on going. You got to have some positive things going on out there. And it's not going to happen unless you have it. And, you know, and I think one of the things I've always said this, and this might not be, you know, as far as, you know, it's sort of kind of taking your freedoms away, but they should be knocking on each and every door and going around finding out who lives in those neighborhoods, every neighborhood. And, and, um, Unfortunately, you have to say, okay, this is a good family. This is a good family. Okay, we got to watch them. And maybe they're already doing that. I don't know. But, you know, it's somehow, you know, even the neighbors have to find out who the neighbors are and, mm -hmm. and know who's living in, in these neighborhoods and, and what's going on. Just like, like uh, you know, when they, had, when they have the terrorist operation going on uh, mm -hmm. in California or wherever they are. You know, a lot of these people have all kind of arsenal in their in their garages or they might have them in some room and and nobody knows about it. They say, oh, he's such a nice person. I didn't know he had all of that, you know, and blah, 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 you know. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you got you got strange people, you know, that's uh, uh, maybe they, that's all they know they want to do is just uh, create chaos like you 45. <laughs> well, Ted, there's a whole lot of other stuff going on that's positive out there and that is affecting uh, our community and stuff and uh, other ways also. We have this uh, tariff that uh, 45 and, and China are, are constantly bickering at each other and stuff about, which is going to eventually affect us and stuff, our pocketbooks, because it's affecting China, us now, bro. Well, it's going to get worse because uh, China is already, uh, uh, Trump's already enacted. He said, what, today, tomorrow, they're going to enact another $20 billion, on $20 billion of imports and stuff. And they're going to have another 25% tariff. And China said, well, you do that, we're going to be tit for tat. We're going to start doing some of our stuff, too, and everything. So uh, it's getting to be a, a real hectic thing. And I believe that... Uh, that uh, old 45 thinks that he got a chance of winning this stuff or or fall back on his old standby. If it don't work, lie. <laughs> or blame it on the mama. <laughs> yeah, blame it on the mama. <laughs> Find somebody you can blame it on. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't him, though. It wasn't him. But, but it's well, getting serious. I didn't do it. It's getting serious, man. It is getting really serious here. And we're going to have to, uh, you know, we're on a fixed income. So that's right. We can't, we can't afford to have hey, all this stuff start going up. You know, you know, those nickels and dimes add up, bro. You know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we have I mean, to it might be a nickel piling. dime here. It might be a nickel dime here or whatever. But, you know, just like the gas prices, I noticed the gas prices that went up about 30 cents in the oh, last yeah. week. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, that little 30 cents, you know, adds up. You know, you keep on putting gas in your tank. Absolutely. And yeah. I know you are because you out there running around picking the grandkids <laughs> up, taking the grannies all over the place and yeah. everything, you know. <laughs> it adds up. 
Yeah, yeah, it was almost like a job. You got a job, man, that, that you were not getting paid for. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so you know, you you think about this though. You know, um, you know, I did a little thing on Facebook the other day, and this is a little side thing, but I took three of my grandkids. You know, um, we were out and about, and so we stopped in Walmart to get some refreshments. Mm -hmm. And so we walked in there, they all had their own money, mm -hmm. and which was nice. And so they went and got their little soda pop and their little chips. And, you know, they have all kind of little bags or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So they all got their little favorite little crunchy things that they wanted. And uh, they spent, all three of them spent over $3 for a soda. We call it soda, whatever, you know, they just drinking. Mm -hmm. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and a, a bag of whatever, over three dollars, almost three dollars and fifty cents. I can remember, man, when I was their age, it. I used to get a bag of chips. I used to get a, a dill pickle, a peppermint stick, cookies, and a soda for less than fifty cent for fifty cent. Absolutely. But <laughs> did you did you look at those grandchildren and stuff when they walked up there and they spent that over three dollars or something? They never didn't even, even think about it. They never even blinked their eye, they man. It's a normal eye. thing for them. You know, it's normal. Hey, three dollar oh, granddad, you know, it's not nothing. <laughs> you didn't even think about it, man. I mean, it was like it was like I all the thing I do is shake my head. I say, This is highway robbery for these little kids. They can't even have a little snack. Well, they didn't care. All they wanted was what they snack and walk away. You know, it didn't bother them because they have an unlimited amount of money. You know, mama, granddad, and I, they didn't have enough money to pay for it. They would have turned around there and looked at you. Hey, granddad, I'm, a, I'm about, a, you know, 50 cents short here. Can you make it up? <laughs> yeah, you know, but I'm just saying the cost. And, and, and right now, you know, you look at right now, you know, um, I went into the store uh, yesterday to go get me some, uh, what was I looking for? For um, some fruit to go with my salad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I say, oh, I'm gonna put a, a nice granny apple in there. Mm -hmm. You know how much, you know how much the granny apple was a pound? $2 and 99 cents. A granny apple. Well, uh, Ted, <laughs> you have to you have to do like uh, some of us frugal folks and stuff doing everything. My wife goes to the farm. Uh, she goes to the farmer's market and let those farmers bring their produce and stuff in. And then that's where she buys her food at. We got three freezers in our house, Ted, and they're both full. Because from Christmas all the way up until now, every time we saw someone sell, we buy it and stockpile it. That's so, a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to, you have to, you know, see these things coming and you have to do it. And my wife, she just walked down there, look in the freezer and say, Well, what do we want today? <laughs> <laughs> she pulls it out, throw it out, and yeah, anybody there, you know. We have family come over, friends come over. She go out of the freezer. Well, see, that's and that's, that's, that's amazing out. because you still do that. You know, I used to do that with my kids. You know, when when we had the house and everything, and and you know, we had a big freezer in the garage and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, you know, when you when you when it's just you and your wife, you know, you don't even think about it. me personally. Now I don't. Yeah, you we, guys still do. We but did. I, I don't. Even we think knew about that the grandkids were going to be coming over during the summer and. We have friends that come over all the time, and we have to be prepared for it because there is no way that we can go out there, Ted, and do what you did. Pay $2.79 a pound for an apple. <laughs> and that was just one apple. No, I, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get one thing straight. I didn't buy that apple, bro. You didn't buy the apple? I'm no, sorry. I did not buy that apple. <laughs> so, I am not so boo boo the fool. So you didn't have any apple in your salad, huh? No, I didn't have no apple in my salad. <laughs> I am not boo boo the fool. But anyway, yeah. let me let me just let us switch gears here. Let me uh, tell you about what's going on with this congressman, man. He sit up here doing inside trading to save himself and his son and his friends money. 
and he knew about it. Now, this is the guy that supports 45. He always on TV. And, you know, now they what they're going to do is, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. Is is it Carney or something like that? He He's from New York. And the guy sit there and um, he's been doing this and they're going to go all down his records for years now and see if he's done any other inside trading because he's got a lot of investments. And I'm he got to, caught. I'm trying to think he's of who you're caught. talking about. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who you're talking about here because I didn't hear that. Yeah, That's yeah, it's all over the news now, you know, and um, I meant to write his name down. and um, But I read the story early this morning. I'm trying to think of his name, but he's from Buffalo, New York area. And this guy... Is he a U.S. congressman? U.S. congressman, Republican. And uh, this guy, man... <laughs> He's been investing in this particular company for a long time. And the CEO called him up and told him, say, hey, that drug that we're working on, it's not going to pass. It's not going to work. He said, what? So he calls his son and tells him about it. And his son and all of them got their money out. He had to keep his in because his, 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 his fund is in Australia. And at that time, Australia was closed. So he couldn't get his money out before... Before that stock went down, they said it lost 92%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now his name, they is, got, uh, his name is Chris Collins. Chris Collins, there you go. Yeah, and from that New guy, York. Yeah. 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 He he's 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 getting ready to um, you know, I don't know if his lawyers to keep him out of jail, but uh that right there is, you know, Miss What's her name with jail for that, didn't she? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Oh yeah, so, uh, they uh, they uh, they're waiting on him. I know Chris Collins. Man, he's uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the first I heard about that, Ted. That was there's a lot of stuff going on out here, but that's the first I heard about that. Oh yeah, you know he's just uh, like your boy over there in Georgia, in your area. Oh man, don't talk. <laughs> don't talk about my my past uh, <laughs> representative from the sixth district of Georgia. <laughs> yeah, he, he just he like was him. The, uh, who was the health and human services secretary until he got busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should be in jail too, inside trading. Man, they ain't gonna put Tom in jail. They they knew he had insider trading when they confirmed him to be the health and human services secretary. Yep. So I guess when he realized that they were gonna still confirm him, that he can still go back and do the same thing he was doing when he was the representative and stuff there in Congress. I'm going to go back. Well, hey, I got away with this. I might as well do this. So they finally busted him down in that thing because he's riding around on on the government's dime, private planes and stuff, taking his family to rodeos and horse shows and stuff like that. I'm going to go Doing no, stock deals, yes. doing yeah. stock deals on the phone while you're in the place, yeah. feeling like a big oh, shot, man. feeling like a millionaire, a billionaire. <laughs> hey, they got rid of him quick. <laughs> he hey, they they really need to check all of these congressmen out because I think a lot of them are doing inside trading because you know, you know, they be scratching each other's back. You know, they run into all these CEOs and and what have you, looking for favors from them. You know, to pass this legislation or that legislation. Check them all out, man. Check them all out because they probably all doing inside trading. Not yeah. all of them, but, they but most are, of them. Yeah. them. They, they getting that money somewhere. They getting money from all these uh, lobbyists and stuff out there. These lobbyists, man, they got untold amounts of money. You talking in the billions of dollars that they have at hand to buy whoever they want to buy, and yeah. they're and they're doing it. You know those those K Street boys and stuff or something else. But uh, let's. Take another slight turn here, Ted. We're going to take a little U-turn here back. Uh, I saw something in the uh, newspaper and stuff the other day, and I hadn't heard about this gentleman, well, this kid and stuff for a long time. When I was a little bitty boy, I remember I was I lived with my grandmother in mm -hmm. uh, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and my grandmother come outside. You know, I think I was about three or four years old. I, I, I wasn't very old, but I still remember this. Mm -hmm. She grabbed me and brought me in the house and said, Edward, you got to stay in the house for, for a while. I wasn't, I don't, well, I got to stay in the house, Grandma. Well, 
Emmett Till, I just got killed. Mm. Mm. I remember that. They just murdered that boy. They uh, cause he whistled at a white woman. Mm -hmm. He whistled at a white woman, and they beat the crap out of him and threw him in the river. And some kind of way his body came up out of the river and stuff because they tied this big anchor around his neck. But some kind of way the anchor didn't do what his boat had done, and he rose up and they found his body. He was all messed up real bad. Well, his mother took him back to uh, Chicago. That's where she lived at because she sent him down there to stay with uh, his, uh, her, her, grand, her parents and stuff down in Mississippi. And so she brought his body back. She made them. They didn't want to bring his body back because they said he was messed up real bad. So they brought his body back. And it was one of the biggest funerals and stuff that Chicago ever had. Mm -hmm. I remember. Church of God in Christ. And his mother said, I want America and the world to see what they did to my baby. Mm. She had an open coffin. And man, it was devastating. Well, anyway, get on down here to 2018. Uh, they had a memorial down there in the uh, town and stuff where Emmett Till was killed. They put mm. a memorial up. And the family and the aunt, uh, his uh, ancestors, the people and stuff who were out there now who were still supporting him and want to keep his uh, uh, memories and stuff alive and stuff, they put up a, uh, a nice little plaque there where he was killed at. Well, the, the memorial has been defaced. Mm. This, is, this will be the third time it's up. Mm -hmm. First time... They shot it up full of holes. Took it down, put another one up. Shot it full of holes. Got another one up. They got a few bullet holes in it. Now this kid has been dead for what? Almost 60 years, Ted? Yes. He's been dead for over 60 years and you still got people in Mississippi or here in the South or all over this country and stuff who still believe in racism. And it is, it is unbelievable. It's, it's unheard of and stuff to have something like that happen. All it is is just a memorial. They, his family has put up a memorial to, you know, for, for him. And they want to go out and shoot holes, use his memorial target practice. Now, According to them, nobody knows who's doing it. But I know that somebody in that town knows who's going around and doing this. Yep. And nobody's going to tell. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if they're going to continue to deface this memorial or what they're going to have to do. Maybe they're going to have to put up a steel memorial so they can't put bullet holes in it. Well, that's, that's mm -hmm. right there tells you, you know, how you know, and, and you know, I don't know, man, you know, you can look at it in, in both ways. I mean, this might not be like uh, apropos, but, you know, some people, you know, doing it as a joke or think it's a joke or whatever. I don't know. And then some could be it, it could be a, a a real that hard racist attack, you know, just to, you know, or I don't know, you know, but. Like you said, you know, in many ways, you know, you look at a lot of places, you know, if you go on the freeways and different streets, you see memorials. Absolutely. They got a little flower memorial up there. Nobody's taking them down. They didn't rip them up. I, I, on the highway, I saw a couple when I went to, to, to Chicago and stuff. The mm -hmm. other day. Yeah. Man, they got a nice little memorial out there. Why would anybody want to bother that? Yeah, somebody well, that's got, what I'm saying. Somebody about. got killed there and the family is remembering their loved one. You're right. By putting right. a memorial up. And, and why would somebody want to destroy that? I have no idea. So it's a, I guess the racism, I guess, is still very strong, I, I Ted, in this country. It is still very, very strong here. And I don't understand why most people haven't gotten over it, but they haven't. And 
I don't know what we're going to do, you know, as a country and stuff to uh, uh, to stop what's going on, uh, because as Martin Luther King and a lot of other our leaders and stuff and our big thinkers and stuff say, and Barack Obama said as he was down there in South, uh, South Africa and stuff last month, that uh, hate is is learned. When the child comes in to tell you the world, they are they sit there, they're free and they're clear. But someone has to preach hate to them. Right. And you know, and I can and what you just said is correct because you know what? In my household, my family didn't preach my, my mom, you know, my stepdad did not talk hate. Mm-hmm. They, I never heard, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, they might say something sly, you know, all those white folks, you know, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And that's it. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. no big old, you know, uh, you know, all that, you know, that mess. And, you know, we don't like those so and so, so and so, you know, calling people names. Then they never come out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. Never came out of their mouth. And so, therefore, I never really got that in my spirit, you know, in my mind, you know, to hate people. So, it's amazing, you know. Um, I was I was looking at one of the rallies of Trump's forty five. They had kids there mm-hmm. while they was talking about the media, mm-hmm. while they was uh, cursing the media, and mm-hmm. you know throwing up their fingers and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and anytime they mentioned something that that they liked that was very negative against any other kind of other group, you know they they you know and the children were watching all of it. That's learned. Mm-hmm. That's teaching them how to They're act. Teaching them how to act. Teaching them hate. They're teaching them to do these things, and it is, it, it's a, it's a learned behavior. It's not something that you uh, are born with. It's a learned yeah. behavior. People learn how to hate. Yeah, and, and, and what comes, you know, you can have a, you know, Jesus used to always say that you, you know, like you can have a, um, you know, some kind of thought in your head and it's almost like you did it malice or jealousy or all of that kind of thing and and, you know and so you know even when you think on it and it's in your heart it's almost like you've done it anyway Mm -hmm. you know but then when it comes physical that's when it's it's horrible and a lot of times uh, people can work themselves up so much it becomes physical we saw that in uh, North Carol- uh, South Carolina, in Charlottesville. You know, people were, were uh, speaking and stuff, and then the violence broke out. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, and why? Why I have no idea because people just want to live like everybody else. So, you know, I don't know, but you know, I, you know, I just don't get it. You know, because you don't own nothing. Mm-mm. A lot of those people don't own nothing. They don't, you know, they, they, they barely got a job, mm-hmm. you know, just like the rest of us, you know, <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out what, 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 what advantage are you going to have, you know, by hating other people? I guess, I don't know. I, I, it baffles me because, you know, everybody, we already know the statistics, bro. Mm-hmm. We know that half over, over 60, 70% of the people is living from paycheck to paycheck in this country. Absolutely. And that's a lot of them Mississippi like that, my friend. A lot of them like that, but it was just it's just something that they just have not given up. It is so hard for them to give it up. And it's it's prevalent and stuff here, Ted, all over the South. You have a majority of minority minorities are majority here in most of these states here in the South. But every last one of these states from Texas all the way over and stuff. They have not elected other than the, the gentleman there in South Carolina who was picked because one of his uh, people and stuff and everything um, got a job doing something else. So he got picked to be a U.S. senator from South Carolina, uh, Mr. Scott. But other than that, you don't have any uh, U.S. senators and stuff here in these states and everything, and, and even though you got a majority of people of color and stuff who are in these states, you got a majority of black folks and stuff in Alabama. You got Mississippi has a majority black folks. South Carolina has almost a majority. 
of black folks, but they cannot elect them a, uh, a black U.S. senator to represent their state. So it's, uh, it's something else, man. There's racism and that's going on and stuff down here. Uh, one other thing, uh, Ted, we're going to get on. So that's kind of a sad thing that we need to, uh, you know, I hate to talk about a lot of sad stuff. But anyway, uh, one, of the, one of the other topics and stuff that I had was capitalism. Yes. That's, that's my topic. That's your topic. <laughs> <laughs> you put it down there, but you know. Yeah, I did, because it's, I, I, um, it, capitalism, man, is under attack. You know, our, our capitalism and system right, right is so under so. attack. Yeah. Rightfully so. I mean, yeah. Uh, um, capitalism can be a good thing. You know, I think we've talked about this a, a number of times because if I provide a service, I want to get paid. Absolutely. And if I'm top dog in that service, I should get top pay. Absolutely. You know, you might have a person that might can do a pretty good job, but then if I can do an excellent job and you're going to be really happy about it, I should get another $100. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm doing an excellent job. So, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what capitalism is, is, is meritocracy. Uh, and, and you sort of, um, you know, it's based on your merits, it's based on your skill, it's based on how hard you work, you know? And, but then the other side of that, you got these people that might be good at what they do, but they overcharge you. Mm-hmm. That's where the greed comes in at. Mm-hmm. Well, but that's 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 the society that we live in. Ted, greed has taken over, uh, and, and greed and capitalism and everything—it's it, they don't mix at all because they're the uh, the fairness and stuff in capitalism. Like you said, you work hard, you give them a good day's work, you're going to get a good day's pay. But when you work hard and you do everything you're supposed to do, and you are not being paid. For what you're worth, then capitalism stopped working. If you and work hard, that's what's happening right now. now. Yes, because people should be getting paid Ted enough so they can live. Uh, and equality, you know, man. It's yeah, inequality. and 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 and, and, and we we are sending. You find these Republicans and stuff who uh, believe uh, they, we believe in capitalism. This is capitalism because we are doing that, but. Capitalism now is being the majority of your folks and stuff, the people in this country are being pulled into a socialist system. Because and you're absolutely they can't right. live because they can't live off the wages that you give them. So they're sitting there and they're feeding off that socialist trough. They got to go and get food stamps. They got to get section eight so they can have, be able to uh, uh, pay for their homes where they can live at. They're getting subsidized and stuff for the utilities and stuff like that because they can't do anything. So the, the people who believe in capitalism are forcing this country into a socialist state. And why is that? Is because these corporations don't want to pay the worker a decent living wage because they spend all their money on two things. Well, besides themselves, but advertising and lobbyists where they can cook the books so that they can get the benefits and not be taxed on certain things or get, you know, be allowed, you know, deregulate this and deregulate that, you know, or if, you know, we talked about OSHA, you know, Mm -hmm. like having safety standards, you know, they cut back on those type of things so that they won't get fined and all Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So the 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 the, the uh, politicians are getting pat on the back with a little money in their pocket to overlook all those types of things, and it makes it so that they can keep more profit money in their pocket, Absolutely. and they don't filter it down to the to the average worker. Absolutely. So in essence, they are destroying capitalism. In well, to do and in the sense that we were were born up in capitalism, you know, you and I, in a, at an early age, we believed in capitalism because yeah. 
you go out there and like you said, you hit the streets, man, you go out there and you're going to sell hustle. something when you're yeah. a little bitty boy, you know, gonna but I'm going gonna, gonna to go out there and hustle. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. make me some money. <laughs> nowadays, you can't, even, little kids can't, look, people can't do that. Nowadays, you know, you get put in jail for soliciting and all that kind of stuff, you know, or asking you gotta people, have a you license. know, you got to have a license. license. <laughs> you know, the average kid probably can't nobody's doing. And they say, uh, can I cut your grass, sir? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, you're going to call the police on me to cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is horrible, man. I I hate to be talking about all this so crazy. No, stuff here. no, it's just it's, 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 think about this. You know, your boy uh, Elon. What is his name? Elon Musk. Eli Musk. Elon Musk has threatened to go private, mm -hmm. and so his stock went up four hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> And he's but they about said taking, that he's committing a crime. That's right. That's what they say. <laughs> he's we'll, see. A crime. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. You know. But the point is, is that he's threatening to take all of his manufacturing over to China. Mm -hmm. And now think about this. Why is he doing that? Cheap <laughs> labor. I have uh, absolutely, <laughs> but I have even a better idea that he's doing. He's doing it because of that too. But there are some other things going on there also. Do you under you know that his board have have, have 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 almost took his job away from him? He had to fight like the Dickens and stuff at their board their last board meeting to keep his job as CEO. So because they are ready to run him out of his CEO job for uh, a company that, that he built, uh, he's looking at it and say, well, I don't want these board to tell me what to do. So I'm going to go private. Mm. And that's his motivation. Even, and he's also motivated by moving his, his manufacturing over there into China too for that cheap labor. That's also in his books too and everything. But I believe that he really wants to take that company private because he doesn't want that board to tell him he can't do what he wants to do. And, you know, Elon, he's got some real weird ideas, man. How he made it this far, I don't know. Well, he, that man, somebody, he's talking about, he you know, about some weird stuff. Go but ahead. the thing, the thing about it though is, you know, you know, people keep giving them money. They keep do. Investing. They, I mean, big time money. They put big time money into his corporation because they're thinking that he's gonna have the new, new thing, and they go, they go, uh, make ten times what they give him. Mm -hmm. You know, if I get and, and some of them are kids, minutes, some of them are making money off of him. Oh, yeah. Some of them are making money. There's a few of them are making money off of him because as soon as he starts drunk, because usually what he does and everything is he goes out there, has this big idea, and he starts making money off it pretty quick. Like the uh, Tesla cars, those Model Model 3 cars that he had when he mm -hmm. said he was going to be putting those out in production. How many people, Ted, had, had pre-bought these daggone cars? They paid <laughs> something like $35,000, man, up front. And didn't even, the car hadn't even been made. It wasn't even on the assembly line because he said he was going to make it. They gave him their money. Yeah. So he made money and stuff already. He hadn't even produced not one car. <laughs> but some of them have gotten their money back because he hasn't produced enough of these cars and stuff and everything to put them into the people's hands and everything. And they ask for their money back on but i'm pretty sure there's a lot of them and everything he probably lost their money and everything and didn't get their money back because elon probably said hey your car is coming <laughs> and i can't, <laughs> can't give it back to you know give us two more weeks or two more months and stuff to do it so he's always got some harebrained scheme going on so but like I said, you know, the, uh, the last board meeting that he had, they uh, he almost lost his job. He fought like the Dickens and stuff to keep his CEO position. So he's probably wanting to go private now and everything because they are. He doesn't like that board telling him what to do. Because, well, you know, let's stick to this capitalism because when you think about it, really, <clears throat> there's a lot of times, you know. Um, and I'm going to go here as far as in our community. For some reason, we have a lot, we have a lot of smart people in, 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 
in the, in our community that are in business and what have you, mm-hmm. but they can't grow. They can't, you know, expand because of lack of funds. Mm-hmm. Now they might make a profit, but it's a very little profit. You know, it's sustainable profit for them to continue business. You know, they can pay their employees. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can, you know, replenish uh, their stock or whatever it is that they're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and they can sustain themselves. However, if you wanted to expand and triple your business and have more employees, you got to have capital, mm-hmm. investment capital. And a lot of times uh, these people with the big bucks do not, those people are not coming in and pouring money into your business and, and coming in and supporting you and being on your board. To, to help you expand your business. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem because mm-hmm. you might have a, a, a mom and pop. It might start off with a mom and pop and it grows up a little bit bigger. And then you got to start looking for board people that's going to help you and be able to get you that money. And you got to be smart enough where they don't write contracts and, and deals where, you know, that money is getting out of your company and it's going into their pocket. So it's a it's a big complication thing, complicated thing, man. Capitalism is all about the the contracts. It's all about the deals that you're making and who can get help you get those deals, you know, where you can expand. And you know, we talked about this a while back, you know, and this is one of your global. This is one of your favorite words. Everything is global now. Mm -hmm. So 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 the point is is that if you get a black manufacturer or someone that's out there doing things. You know, and, and well, he gets all of these well, pieces in there. Well, if you, look at, if you look at it, we have uh, a, a lot of those people and stuff are right there in front of us and everything. I can remember, and and, and there's, a, there's a basketball player, Magic Johnson. You know how hard he fought, man, to, to build himself up. Man, he had to almost sell his soul mm-hmm. to, get, to get people to invest into his ideas and yes. now just like you said we got some smart people man and i and you know they're in the hood who know how to make money and to do things and to have this guy and stuff i know he was kind of young and stuff when he got started out doing this but he had a vision and stuff there his mind and stuff was business because he was probably one of the only players and stuff, uh, uh, Ted, that started out at a young age. And part of his salary was a, a very small percentage and stuff of the team. Mm-hmm. I think he what he had uh, uh, the, his uh, owner and stuff and everything gave him, uh, what, 3% of the team as part of his salary that he took. Mm-hmm. And he took that little bit of money and looked that small percentage and stuff of that team and everything and put his money away. Uh, another guy and stuff and everything. He's, he's gone now. He's dead. But I, I remember when Walter Payton and stuff came into uh, football and the Chicago Bears picked him up. And, and, and one of his contracts that him and his attorney and stuff, his black attorney and stuff from Jackson State uh, University and stuff and everything, uh, had the Chicago Bears to buy him 10,000 acres of timberland in Mississippi mm. as part of his salary. And people, our folks and stuff, don't think like that in everything. When they start talking about money, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, green stuff and everything in your hand is not worth having something else and stuff, ownership of something else. So when Magic Johnson decided that he wanted to get that little 3% of the Los Angeles Lakers and stuff, people would probably look at him and say, man, 3%, that's nothing. But heck, the team's worth a billion dollars. <laughs> so right. he had he had monies and stuff coming in off of that 3%. And he finally went out there and sold that 3% and everything and made himself a couple of million dollars and stuff and you know, off of that 3%. And then he took it and said, hey, I want to take this money and expand it and do something else with it. It took him almost two years, man, to convince people to let him buy into the Starbucks franchise. Yep. Sorry about that. 
So mm -hmm. it was, uh, so, you know, you know, like you said, we have a hard time starting up businesses and stuff and from ourselves and doing what we need to do and build it into something that is going to be very profitable. But now, the, now here's the difference though. Ed. Now you mentioned two people. One was a superstar basketball player. The other was a superstar, a superstar football. football player. So that's right there. They have advantages, you know, but, as far as that goes. Ted, Ted, do you remember Magic in one of his stories that he had given us and everything? He had, he came to a team where Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was on there. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was broke. You know, he he made millions and millions of dollars for the Milwaukee Bucks and everything. He came there because he was almost broke. And he he gave the story and stuff and everything that he got there and had a team meeting. And he asked all those players and stuff in there, say, hey, let's and take our money and invested in something. Shoot. <laughs> you think the, the boys wanted to invest their money? Oh, no. <laughs> but I bet you now there's probably a whole lot of them who were in that room and everything with magic during that time and saying to themselves, man, I wish I had to listen to my boy. <laughs> yeah, because Magic's worth almost, almost a billion almost, dollars. He's worth almost a billion dollars now. <laughs> <laughs> so he 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 was progressive in what the heck he did, but he did like that. Ted he did offer a lot of them a chance to come in and invest with him and everything, and they they looked at him like he was a fool. Hey, you ain't gonna, <laughs> oh no. So a lot of times you'll find out Ted those folks who got money and stuff and everything they don't listen to what's going on. But you have a lot of those players and stuff now. You look at LeBron James. He's investing a lot of his money and stuff into, into the community. Uh, you look at Shaq. Man, his wife took a bunch of his money. But bro, man, is inching back, man. He's getting up there around that five, six hundred million dollar level and stuff. He got his money into everything. He got into. I see. I see Shaq on these commercials about. <laughs> about putting heat on his back <laughs> he, he he's selling car insurance <laughs> lotion lotion he loaded all this stuff and everything <laughs> but each one of them ted is bringing more money into his pocket and then he says that he's turning around and buying into these daggone companies that he is around there advertising and stuff with he's buying stock in these companies so he's building up his net worth so and, and that's true. And, and and the thing is, is that that's the advantage of being an athlete, and especially an athlete with celebrity. And he's a celebrity, mm -hmm. you know. So if a person is a celebrity, Magic Johnson is a celebrity. Magic Johnson does uh, a lot of uh, billboards and commercials for different insurances and what have you. And, but now I'm talking about your average Joe Blow. Ah! <laughs> and see, when you got your average Joe Blow that's out there on the street and he struggling and he's trying to get capital you know he might only have one or two if he lucky three streams of income and that's himself his wife <laughs> and whatever's coming in on the business you know so the thing is is that <clears throat> you know in order to have that business you got to have capital and that's how you build businesses and that's what that's the difference in our community. People are, you know, you're not there. They, they don't get the capital to sustain themselves. You go in there and, you know, I mean, I'm just telling you, when I sold insurance, I mean, advertising, and I'm telling you, and you go into these small mom and pop businesses, I mean, they are doing goo guys of work. People coming in, I'm talking about your tire companies, your your salons, or uh, all of that. And and they're doing a couple of million dollars a year in business. Every day, retail stores doing business and they expand. They got they got loyal employees and they're doing good business. They're in the right location. And and they, and when they need funding, they get funding. 
and they advertise. You go to a you go to the average black business, that first thing they tell you, I don't advertise. Well, that's why you don't have no business coming in. That's why your store is empty. Word of mouth is good, but you gotta advertise. You gotta put the word out. And a lot of them don't advertise. And a lot of them don't have relationships with the banks and the banks don't, um, for whatever reason, you know, what we call redlining and all that kind of stuff. So, so the capitalism is works well for some people. And if you're a celebrity, you got a better chance because people admire you. They feel comfortable with you. They feel safe with you. And they can say that, Hey, I, I shook hands with Shaq. Or I had dinner with Shaq. You know, that makes them feel, how was he? And, you know, they, they talk about that. And that's, that's, that's a conversation. So when you're a celebrity, you know, we got a big celebrity here in, in Tampa who's black. And you might know him because you're a football fan. He's, uh, he, he, came, he went to Oklahoma University, and he, he's a Hall of Famer, and he played for the Bucks. Oh, I know you're done. Leroy Selman. Leroy Selman, right now. They talk about him on the radio right now. I was just listening to the radio today. The guy who's the, uh, got his job, you know, the um, uh, sports director or administrator of all the sports over there. The white guy, he said he used to be his assistant to Leroy Selman. And then he, and when Leroy left, and he went somewhere else and then he came back and now he's the director. But what I'm saying is that they, they spoke of him in glowing terms because he was a celebrity. Not only was he a football player, but he was a celebrity. And, 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 and that's what people should use. You should use your, you know, if you're a celebrity or you're a sports person or, or something like that. And, and that's what helps. But the average oh, Joe Blow, it average helps, blow job, but, but there's a whole, but there's a whole lot of them out there, Ted, who have been uh, big time sports persons and stuff, and they, like I said, they poor church mouser. They don't have nothing going for themselves. <laughs> they, they ain't got a time, time to speak of. They are locked up in jail on drugs or whatever. So it doesn't because you're a sportsman uh, fanatic or you're, you know, whatever it doesn't guarantee it. But, you know, there are a, a lot of us out here and stuff, Ted, and, and you have seen it and stuff. You know, you've had people to uh, call you and talk to you about helping them to uh, get their businesses and stuff going and whatever, or asking you uh, for advice and stuff and starting up their businesses. And and you know that they have these uh, drawbacks and stuff and everything. They are, uh, they have good ideas and stuff and everything, but they don't uh, really... Uh, go about the business and stuff of having uh, uh, a, a relationship, like you said, with a financial institution to where they can be able to borrow money and stuff for them. Because if you are out there in a capitalistic society, you have to, to conform to capitalistic ideals. And, you know, a lot of those ideals and stuff comes with, you know, filing, getting your taxes filed every year, making sure that uh, getting putting together a business plan and putting yourself on a budget even though you own the business and everything you're on a budget you, you stick with that budget and stuff no, because, because like in the because third you, let's say in the first quarter you have a good quarter and then you yeah, pay you yourself a quarter and you, you, take, you take that money and say oh <laughs> man i got a windfall hell i can go buy me a mercedes <laughs> benz and stuff so i can ride here <laughs> instead of putting the money back in your business or building up your reserves and everything and stuff so you can have something to fall back on because as you know ted you worked in banks and stuff most of those bankers and stuff they want to look at your bottom line have you been saving do you have any reserves and stuff built up and everything that's going to offset them lean times and stuff where you can't uh, when things get bad or whatever. And all businesses and stuff have those times when it gets real lean. So you got to have a reserve sitting back there and everything so you are capable of paying those bills and stuff out for maybe two or three months time until things get back good again. 
But if you yeah, don't awesome. plan for those things and stuff, these other banks and stuff, well, I'm not going to leave you my money because you're not planning because you are not conforming to what a capital Or unless you're 45, you know. okay? Unless you're 45. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go again. Talking about those celebrities. <laughs> you know, 45, you're 45. Celebrity. 45. 45. He's a yeah, celebrity. Yeah. He won't pay that loan. Then he go over here and he get another loan. He won't he pay that loan. And then, you know, and then he go bankrupt on this one. And then he say, okay, well, I'll pay you. But he go over here and make another loan. Then he go bankrupt on that one. <laughs> but as you can see, Ted, old 45 is owned by somebody. Yeah. Somebody owns him. We don't know who it is, exactly who it is, but somebody out there owns him. I don't <laughs> think it's Putin. It. I don't huh? think it's Putin. I don't think it's Putin. It might not be. It could be one of those other oligarchs out there who got him by, by their throat. <laughs> but anyway, we got one other thing that I wanted to bring up to you before because we about the end of our time and stuff here. Uh, Iran. Mm. <sighs> Iran is that dark horse and stuff in the room and stuff now. And in the old 45, he has committed himself to uh, leaving the allies and stuff who had sanctions and stuff on Iran. And Iran was starting to come back. You know that country ever since Obama and, and the, uh, the European Union and, and France and Germany and England all came together and stuff and decided to uh, put, you know, to uh, put those sanctions and stuff there on on him to hold him down, hold Iran down. But they allowed them to sell their oil and stuff out there into the market and become a, a big player and stuff out there if they uh, did not produce any nuclear weapons. Well, Trump decided in his infinite wisdom that he knows the best. And he's now saying that I want world peace. <laughs> <laughs> I want I, my, my thing is world peace. <laughs> well, now he has decided that he wants to put sanctions and stuff back on Iran his own sanctions from this country. And this is really and stuff is going to be causing a lot of problems and stuff. I guess tomorrow, uh, some of those sanctions and stuff supposedly start up with Iran that the United States is going to have. Now, nobody in the, uh, there in the Congress or the Senate has opened their mouth and said a word. Mm. Now, Ted, you remember when Barack was trying to negotiate a treaty, uh, an armistice thing and stuff with Iran. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the uh, Republican senators was giving him so much hell and he almost didn't get that vote and everything to even do what he wanted to do and everything to get with those other countries and stuff. He almost lost that vote. You remember that, don't you? Oh, it yeah. was so close, man. There was some time there where they thought he thought he was not going to be able to get his own Congress and stuff to help support him and stuff and everything to get that treaty deal and everything and stuff across the board. But he finally got it across the board. So he worked his tail off to get it done. So now you find this well, I don't know what you would call me. All you, well, you got a good word for him, 45, and <laughs> not a peep out of any of them. Mm -hmm. You don't even hear the Democrats saying anything about this mess that he's getting us and stuff into now. But right now, you've got other countries like France, England, and Germany and those some of those european nations european union countries and stuff are saying we don't care what sanctions you were in act uh united states we are going to violate them yeah that's what they said so trump's thing is is that he's 
threaten them now and say, okay, you don't do it. We are not going to trade with you. We will. We, we are not going to do anything at all with you. So he's going to have a trade war against you. He's going to have uh, a whole big mess, man. He already got China beating him over the head. He got North Korea sitting down there, sitting back and everything, and they uh, eating it up. China is feeding North Korea like 40 going north. They got ships going in out of their port. <laughs> like crazy, and he still produced the nuclear weapons. <laughs> so he he don't he don't. They're not they're not negotiators. They're not trying to um, really. Uh, they want to just get chaos. And then the bottom line is, if Iran gets frisky, he's already threatened them. Okay, but and so but he's he have, wants them to get frisky. He has no teeth. You know, he's a lion with no teeth. He, he's well, roaring, but he hasn't got teeth in his mouth. If you can't they bite threaten, nobody, you can roar all you want. But if they get, get frisky, Ed, I'm telling you, these Iranians will get, can get frisky because they got frisky with us a few years ago. But they don't have to be, Ted, because they got allies over there in the European Union who says that they're going to trade with them. They don't care what the United States said. They're going to trade with them. So when he gets to this point and stuff to where he's this, this first sanction and stuff is not real bad. It has to do with U.S. banks and stuff like that. Most of those are U.S. companies and stuff that, that's involved in there. But this next round of sanctions and stuff is going to come next month and stuff. And that round and stuff happens to be with oil, not to anybody to buy Iran's oil. Now, if the European Union and some of those other countries decide we're not going to even worry about you, we'll take your oil, there, there's going to be some mess there. What he's going to do and stuff when that happens, I don't know. Because well, the Ted, politics you can't fight. You can't fight the well, whole world. The, 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 but I agree. And, and the politics is one thing, but the actuality is first because, you know, when those sanctions was left with Iran, it was so many businesses around the world that went up in Iran. Absolutely. And and, 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 and opened business. up a shop getting Absolutely. business because they, they were waiting big for business them. with them. They were and waiting so, for them. So and, and now you got companies because of the sanctions, a lot of them are leaving. You know, yeah, some of them are not leaving yet. Some of them are still sitting around there waiting to yeah, see what they're yeah. gonna happen. And they're right. hoping that 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 he comes to his senses and stuff or something happens to uh to get this thing neutralized because if it doesn't you know it's gonna create a lot of, i don't believe it's gonna cause a war i believe it's gonna cause a lot of problems and stuff for our country it is going to further isolate us and stuff from our friends who we gonna need if something really happens that's what I'm afraid of, because I believe that Iran is going to survive. They are going to make it through this because they got some allies out there uh, who are willing to buck this country and stuff and everything and say, oh, yeah, the immigrants, country. man, when they yeah. were on sanctions before, man, they were sneaking stuff back back door. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of those people, man. They'd be sneaking stuff back door just like they do in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I mean, North Carolina, North Korea, North, North Korea. Yeah. yeah. So, you so, know. That's well, just what they do, you know. And then it's on the black market, so they probably charge a little bit more, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> you can get a little bit on the black market. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ted, we're about done here with this program. Here. We started a little early. We just a little bit over and stuff our time from when we started and everything. But we had a very, very lively conversation and stuff here. So when we see you again Saturday, at nine o'clock in the morning. Saturday at nine o'clock, and we hope to bring some good news and some joyful news sometime. <laughs> Absolutely, I think we're going to have some. I'm waiting till November. I think November the sixth is going to bring a whole lot of good news to you. All right, a, a whole lot of good news. So right. anyway, you guys have a good evening and <laughs> bye. Let me see.
what you trying to do. Spent the night just trying to find you. You the hottest one under the sun, and I'm under your spell. We stuck just like glue. You ain't got the free crib, oh well. You and me can head to the hotel. Whatever we do, just don't tell. I don't need anybody all on my coattail. I feel your energy, and I ain't trying to fight it. Yo, vibe is way too exciting. I know I'm who you want to ride with. Don't fake it, I know that you like it. It's more than just emotions. I can't ignore emotions. All you gotta do is focus. Not the chills, but you like it. But you like it. Ooh, yeah. I've been out here looking for you. You're something special, man. Get up on my roller coaster. Get inside my air. 